everyone, it's Emily the Writer here and I'm back with another video. It's been a long, long, long time since my last video, so please forgive me for that. Um, a lot has happened since then, as I'm sure you're all aware, um, with the big uh, COVID-19 flying about everywhere. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about. So um, this video is all about Gale, and Gale is an online publisher um, of online primary sources, and they are provided by the Portsmouth University, along many, many others up and down the country, to its students, which are really valuable resources to help with dissertations, essays, and just general fact-finding and knowledge. So if you're a university student, particularly a Portsmouth University student, then stay tuned for this video on all about Gale and how to use Gale, how to get started, and why it's so helpful now during coronavirus. So, as I mentioned, Gale is a publisher of many, many great sources, including valuable primary sources, which we'll be going into in a second. I'll show you firsthand the Gale pro database and their primary sources, and go into how you're going to use them and what tools are available for you. But a little bit about me and why I'm talking about Gale, because uh, if you don't follow me on Facebook, you might this might come as a bit of a surprise, me throwing out an educational academic resource at you. But I've been a Gale ambassador for several years now, um, as part of my work at Portsmouth University as a student, and it's been great, it's been brilliant, and I've really been able to, because of the ambassador program, throw myself into these primary sources and actually help myself more than anything. Um, about, like just take my research from zero to a hundred it's it's been a brilliant experience so um, because of my time with Gale and learning about their sources their databases their platforms both from an external point of view and an internal point of view I've got a little bit of knowledge of how good they are um, this isn't me being biased at all um, they really are valuable sources and you can find some incredible stuff on there um, including the Times Digital Archive, sources up until the 1600s, um, the London Illustrated News, it just goes on. There's so much to explain and I'm not going to waste my time now. We're going to jump straight into it and I'm going to show you now what the platform looks like and how you can use it at home. You can log in anywhere with Gale as long as you use your student ID. It's that easy. To access Gale's primary source databases as a Portsmouth University student, just go into www.tinyurl.com slash portsmouthgale. You'll then come to a login page. Use your student number for the username and then your password. Log in and you'll soon come to face with the main homepage of the Gale primary sources database. Here is the main search bar and you can search for anything over Gale's primary source databases. Click underneath for advanced search. Advanced search allows you to really narrow down your search functions. You can add, remove and include words. You can also add in illustrated dates, publication titles, content type and really narrow in your search. In Gale's publication search, you can search through the publications through the publication date or languages. If we go to topic finder, here we come across some incredible data visualization. We'll go and touch upon this in a little bit later. So you can scroll down and see everything that you have included in your package. We have some great stuff here, included the archives of sexuality and gender, crime punishment and popular culture, and women's studies archive, along so many others. You can choose which databases to search, and you can choose which ones you don't want to include. If you click on browse pub publications, you can search through the entire catalogue of publications available at your fingertips with Gale's primary sources. You can search through publication subjects such as arts and resources, and through languages such as Catalan, Chinese, Dutch or Danish, among many others. Now we're going to have a quick search for pandemic to show you just how the search function operates on Gale. So it comes up with all these wonderful, incredible sources. There's so many and you can have a look at their thumbnails right here. If we click on document type, you can see all of the documents available at hand too. Here we're going to click on article and essay just to show you how quick and how well it filters down what you need. You can click before dates as well or after. So if you have a historical date in mind, and you want to see how the media responded to that, you can click accordingly before or after and then compare your results. If we apply this, we can see here how many filters we have available. 
and we can click on Topic Finder to see some more information. This is what we briefly looked into earlier. This is an example of data visualization and depending on the topic that you've searched, it will show you all the relevant topics to do with that, as well as their concentration. The ones in red are the ones that are most popular. The ones in green are the least popular. If you click on this, you can see the segmentations and scroll through the articles that are relevant. We can scroll through and click on one and it will take us straight to the source where we can see the document and scan it as we will. Now you can scroll the document, you can zoom in and out and it just looks brilliant. It looks exactly how you would see it in paper and it gives you a really nice, good feel for the source and the topic and data at hand. You can go through the table of contact contents for the whole document too. This one we can scroll all the way down to page 63 and click on page 49 for just a random topic to see what other articles were published at the same time as the one we first saw. We can also click on full citation and easily see all the information we need such as the publication date, the author and the language. We can also search the document. We can search within this article, within this issue or within this publication. As you see, we search for pandemic and it takes us straight back to the first article all about pandemics in that issue. It's a brilliant way to cross-reference information and to see how your content, content relates to others. When you search documents, they also highlight the text that you need, making it really easy and really nice on your eyes to do research and to find things at the touch of a button. We can also click on citation tools at the top right. This is brilliant, it gives us all we need in MLA, APA or Chicago editions and also allows us to export it to Google Drive, OneDrive or download it as an RIS. This is brilliant if you're using other study tools, especially OneNote, which allows you to compile all your sources into one. You can also decide to send it and share it to other people via Google Drive or email. You can download the document as a PDF or as an OCR. And this depends whether you want the current page or the entire document. You can also print selections too. It's really this easy. If you want to get back to the page, click get link on the top right hand corner. This is really important because the URL at the top is not a stable link. It's always changing. So if you want to get back, just copy this, select. Term frequency is another brilliant feature to use and will give you further visualization to help with your research. It shows you the frequency of terms from when and how often they were mentioned. This is brilliant to cross-reference certain dates with certain things. Now, let's put these techniques and these features to work and search up coronavirus. Let's see what we can dig up. So there's already 57 newspapers and periodicals at our hand to look at. And there's so many we can see. Now let's have a look. Ah, so this one is all about a deadly bat virus passed on between humans. Let's click on that one. It's from 2013. What could it say? And this is really interesting that we can look back on historical data like this. And not only can we look at what was going on at the time, but we can also find really interesting patterns and really interesting evidence of people's expectations, people's beliefs, people's approaches to different problems. Here we can see coronavirus highlighted in many different parts and we can read about how coronavirus was actually found years and years ago but was considered a novel virus. Now that was a quick whistle stop tour of Gail's primary sources. There is so, so much more to go into. So let me know if you want more videos like this. If you're not a Portsmouth University student and you want to find out more about Gail, get in touch or go onto Gail's website. Or contact your head librarian and see if she has a trial of Gail waiting for you or if there are some primary sources hidden right under your nose.